hi, I'm Aaron. Uh, I work at Elastic. I think I'm obligated to say we're hiring. Um, but I want to talk about uh, operating human systems. What happens, what can we learn from our computers when our human connections start to break down? Uh, specifically as it revolves around MTBF and MTTR. These are the literal word translations of that. Uh, I think the talk title says Fallout and Relationship because it talks about people. Uh, and specifically, we're going to argue that optimizing for repair and relationship is better than trying to avoid failure. Uh, we're also be dealing with complex systems. Complex systems are big, they're always changing, they're inherently unknowable as a whole. Uh, the same input doesn't always equal the same output when you're dealing with these. Uh, we build computers like this, humans individually are complex, and as a network, even more so. Uh, there's no root cause to failure in complex systems and consequently our relationships. Uh, the root cause to every plane crash is gravity, but that's a bad excuse to stop looking for challenges. We want to actually learn from these, not try to scapegoat it. Uh, so when we build to avoid failure, we build lots of rigid systems. There's lots of no's. Uh, we try to imagine every failure case, and we can't. Uh, so we end up building a lot of workarounds and a lot of tech debt. All this buildup of tech debt eventually comes due. It can lead to catastrophic failure. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I and mean, this happens in our relationships too, like we have relational debt. Whenever we interact with someone, uh, some amount of transaction takes place. It's not zero sum. We can walk away both being enriched from that interaction. Uh, we can both be worse off or it can go one way or another. Uh, but if we don't deal with that debt and that failure to connect, uh, we have problems long term. Uh, and it's not inherently an issue that we have failure. That's sort of how we learn where the edges of our system are, right? Like when we find out when things went wrong, we know where those edges are. It's okay to find that so you know when to hold back. When do I need like a little more comfort so I don't run face first into a fence? Uh, or when do we need to push through the discomfort? When is it okay to push a little harder so that we both grow maybe individually, but more importantly in that relationship and that network that we're building? Okay, so how do we actually go about doing some of this? So uh, there's some base requirements. Step zero is you kind of need a blameless culture. Uh, if you're looking to point fingers and scapegoat things or especially people for problems, you're not going to move to the rest of the steps. They don't matter. Uh, you need to be looking to learn from failures, not try to figure out the causes of them. Uh, so in my team, we have about 18 people in 11 countries. Uh, everyone has an accent, and translations are hard. Uh, so for instance, when I say, I don't know if that would give us the best bang for our buck, my Austrian colleague has no clue what I'm talking about. Uh, so we have to assume good intent. This actually happened with an individual on our team where we just weren't communicating at the same page. Uh, we realized this as I'm typing like really long Slack comments, and I'm like, this should be done in person. Um, it's important to remember you're on the same team. So we also have the Zoom command. I think this is actually built in Zoom integration to Slack. Um, but being able to get face to face and remove the abstraction in that conversation, see facial expressions, hear voices, is really important to restoring that. Uh, and things worked out really well once we could actually talk face to face. Uh, right, so two-way communication is way better than shouting into the void. Uh, sorry, Twitter, that's the entire business model, but uh, it's true. So, for instance, when you're communicating with someone, try getting that confirmation both ways. You know, what you're saying is, my pull request didn't get accepted again, but what I'm hearing is, I'm not good enough to be part of this team. You're acknowledging they're not specifically communicating that to you, while also explaining how it feels to hear that. We still have breakdowns. Uh, we have processes for troubleshooting computer problems. There are also processes for troubleshooting human problems. Uh, Nonviolent communication is a really good incident management framework for human connection. Uh, it deals with a few parts of how to deal with conflict. Part one is observations. These are specific things you can actually see or hear, like, hey, I asked you for help with a problem on a project that's due Friday. It's now Thursday afternoon, and I haven't heard back. There's no judgment there. Feelings are those visceral things, like I feel scared because I have this thing due and I need help, and I'm angry that you haven't responded back. They're not the thoughts and judgments that come with that. Uh, what are the needs? These are basic human needs. You know, I need to know that I, I thought a relationship was closer than this, so I'm feeling disconnected. I need that connection. I also need that peace to know that I'm going to get done what I need to do. Uh, and then requests are positive requests, and they're not demands because there's other power structure challenges there, but um, hey, when I ask for something, can you give me a time frame? And if we're gonna violate that time box, could you just let me know? Like, I just need to know that I can count on you or not for something. 
Um, that's not enough to do this yourself. So here's a bunch of resources. This is like the picture slide, but also I'll give a link to them on Twitter um, for that. And thank you. Let's do an open space to talk more too. Thanks.